On first down, the handoff to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50 yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, INDY. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with his second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Kenny Moore gets to Deshaun Watson. That's a sack for Kenny Moore. Kenny has a pick and now a sack in the game. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. With the 85th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select free safety Julian Blackman out of Utah. Uh, He's a guy that switched positions in 2019. He was formerly a cornerback, switched to free safety, uh, and the Colts get him here at 85. He's 6'1", 204. He's a guy that uh, got injured uh, at the end of last year in December, uh, but certainly a guy that has some upside here. I know, Andrew, you were talking about some experts were saying had he not been injured, he may have been likely a second round pick. Uh, You know, he's a guy that certainly has the ball skills, obviously coming from corner to safety uh, to be another depth piece, especially, uh, you know, with the uncertainty around the Colts current free safety starter, Malik Hooker. Uh, Here's another guy to add some depth to that secondary. And now you have presumably, Four safeties are going to roll with unless you make another move. Um, and Malik Hooker, Kari Willis, uh, then you get Blackman, and then obviously George Odom was a guy that filled in when needed last year, and I think it's a pretty solid player for you. Andrew, what are your takes here on the Colts selecting a Utah product, Julian Blackman, in the third round? One thing that speaks volumes in terms of how Chris Ballard views uh, depth in the secondary uh, you know, he went out and addressed that a little bit with, with the signings of TJ Carey and Xavier, um, Xavier Rhodes, pardon me. And then he just addresses that even further with Julian Blackman here. Um, and as you mentioned, Cody, I did hear a lot of experts saying that had Julian not suffered that torn ACL, that he was a second round pick. And I think Chris Ballard was thrilled to get him um, and, and Frank Reich as well. And that entire personnel staff were thrilled to get him where they did at 85. In fact, I'm reading a tweet from uh, Kevin Bowen, who said that Blackman just told them a few minutes ago that he's had a lot of contact with the Colts and, quote, don't be surprised if you earlier than people think, unquote. So, um, I mean, that, that in and of itself speaks volumes in terms of what Chris Ballard and company saw in Blackman. And I don't know if it speaks volumes in terms of what, how they feel about Hooker. But as you mentioned, Cody, you now have George Odom, you have Kari Willis um, and Malik Hooker. And then uh, now you add Blackman to that mix. So I, I, think it's a, I think it's a great pick. Yeah, and the Coles also didn't pick him originally where they, where they had a third-round pick at 75. They traded down 10, got him at 85, traded pick 197 as well, got 85. 149 and pick 182 so Chris Ballard was talking and he was adamant about I would like more picks well he gets another pick here with this trade and the Colts get a free safety and add to their secondary Uh, you mentioned they already addressed corner position with signing two guys Xavier Rhodes TJ Carey Uh, so yeah overall it, it looks like the Colts are continuing to add this is the first guy that they add on defense we were talking off air, Andrew. You knew it was only a matter of time before Chris Ballard was going to address this defense in some way. He did majorly in free agency, added a lot of pieces, and now he adds another piece to that secondary, which struggled at times last year, especially um, with some injuries with Malik Hooker. I know Corey Willis missed some games. So you needed some depth there at the safety position. Julian Blackman, definitely a guy, uh, you know, had, had that injury, but is definitely a guy that could potentially come in and make an impact. Even, even if he, you know, when he comes back and is fully healthy and fully healed, he could be a guy that could make a little bit of an impact for you. Just adding more depth to that. Um, and you mentioned it also, Andrew off air. This is the highest pick the Colts have made at the safety position since they drafted Malik Hooker 15th overall in 2017. So what could that potentially mean, do you think, for the future of Hooker and the the future of just this Indianapolis safety room? 
Well, I'll tell you this, Cody, as I'm scrolling Twitter here, um, in the Colts reporters, Zach Kiefer, Stephen Holder, and Kevin Bowen, um, and others are on the uh, Zoom conference with black men. The Colts told him directly that, you know, we're not we're not worried about your injury. Um, and as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, they did say that, you know, don't be surprised if we take you earlier um, than, than most people would expect. So as of right now, I don't really think Malik Hooker's in any trouble. Um, obviously, he hasn't been as productive as, as I'm sure the Colts would have liked him to be, especially where they picked him, being that 15th overall pick uh, in the 2017 draft. There's a lot of expectation with come, that comes with being uh, a first round a first round pick, especially if you're a safety. Um, so, uh, you know, honestly, I think time will tell, uh, specifically, you know, maybe a week or so, a week and a half down the road, if the Colts pick up his fifth year option or if they don't. Um, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Some things that stand out about, Ju- about Julian Blackman, he obviously has ball skills, like I mentioned, coming from corner to safety. Um, in his three years with Utah, he had nine interceptions, He's also a strong tackler, which I think the Colts like a lot. I know that was a knock on Malik Hooker coming out. Uh, he's a guy that I think just overall he has good length, a good size, a, a typical Ballard pick, if you will, a guy who has – he's very athletic, a guy who has – is a long type of player. I, I think it, it fits really well into what the Colts want to do at the safety position. So now the Colts have addressed safety, which we said was a need. They've addressed, addressed wide receiver, which we said was a need, and they've addressed running back, which we actually included as a need. A lot of, you know, there were some people in the comments who said, what are you talking about? The running back's not a need. Well, uh, the Colts <laughs> drafted a running back in Jonathan Taylor there at 41. So obviously they looked at it as, it, as a need and the best player available. And so it'll be interesting to see now uh, on Saturday, the, the final part, the final Three rounds of the draft finish out rounds four through seven. Interesting to see what other players the Colts add to their offense and defense. So, all right, guys, thanks for listening. For Andrew and myself, it's, it's going to be an interesting day three. It's always been a fun day two so far. Um, thanks, guys, and go Colts.